Okay, so in this video I'll be extracting CBD from the ZA, which is an extreme cool chemical that is used to treat conditions like Parkinson, schizophrenia, diabetes and of course social anxiety, which is what I needed for. However, before we start, I must state the fact that due to YouTube censorship rules, I can't show you any actual Zaza, so I'll have to censor the hell out of it, just so that you can see the video. If I didn't censor it, then the video would get age restricted and you'd have to plug in your mama's credit card and social security number into YouTube to watch it. I do not encourage any illegal drug consumption and remember kids, dap on drugs. So without further ado, this is my grass, and scientifically speaking, Zaza is a foul-smelling and dense mixture of cannabinoids, fats, oils and organic junk held together by cellulose. And to separate all of that from our desired cannabidiol, we have to pull the CBD into a solution using a solvent. So to begin, I've put the Zaza into a blender. After blending it all up, I've put everything into a beaker and then I pulled out the absolute pinnacle of Slavic cuisine, which is the Naturat. It's 90% ethanol, it's purple for some reason and it sterilizes your throat and stomach if you drink it. Of course, some Slavic wizards are able to consume this sacred purple potion, but sadly I can't because my hobo level is too low. Once the hot plate warms up, the ethanol will begin to vigorously boil and to limit the loss of our solvent, I've put a boiling flask on top of the beaker filled with cold water. When the hot ethanol vapors touch the flask, they get cooled down and slowly drip back into the mixture, creating a lazy man's reflux. After leaving it to boil for around 20 minutes, I pass the solution through a coffee filter to remove the solid, insoluble junk. Now that we've got a pretty pure Zaza extract, it's time to evaporate excess solvent, so once again, I've cranked up the heating, but this time to the max. Once everything evaporated, we left with a Zaza concentrate and it's mostly composed of oils, fats and of course the cannabinoids. And now we will have to somehow pull out only the CBD without getting any of the other stuff. Because there really isn't that much information on purifying CBD from Zaza extracts, I've decided to go with what is pretty much the most documented and optimal solution and that's chromatography. So in simple terms, chromatography is a technique which allows you to separate a mixture of compounds into different fractions. For example, on this drawing there is a chromatography column packed with fine silica and on top is a buffer solution of solvent. Once we add the Zaza extract into the column, the compounds in the extract go into what's called a mobile phase. In simpler terms, they start moving down. In the solvents, the compounds move pretty fast, however, once they arrive at the silica layer, they will go at relatively different velocities through it. The basis of chromatography is that different compounds move through materials at different speeds. And in our case, most of the organic junk, which is contaminating our CBD, moves slower than the cannabinoids, which means it is possible to get mostly pure product without the strange junk that is contaminating it. What's cool about this is that there will be a small separation between the THC and the CBD. However, not only will it be almost impossible to separate the two in the setting, but also the Zaza I have was genetically modified to have extremely small amounts of THC in it, which is why I can buy it legally. So to start, I've pulled out a Bushner funnel, which will act as a chromatograph column. This Bushner funnel was then stuffed with some extremely fine silica and then I poured in some absolute ethanol. Once the silica settled, I had to pull a vacuum, but because my vacuum pump broke, I had to suck the air out using my lungs. And yes, that's as stupid as it sounds. In general, you shouldn't use your lungs for vacuum filtration, but since it's just alcohol, I figured that I could do it without harming myself. <laughs> I was concerned that I might get wasted of the alcohol vapors alone, but in the end it worked out fine. So once I started adding the Zaza extract, the sound got displaced, which was pretty bad, but using some quick thinking, I was able to fix it. Then I added the rest and I started pulling a vacuum. You can see here the solvent getting leached through the column. The first fraction was collected until a green color started appearing. Then I've pulled the vacuum once again, and this is our second and final fraction. This one is much greener, but I bet that there will be much more CBD here than in the first one. It seems that the green dye moves very fast through the silica, and as it turns out, it will be the main contaminant of our product. I'm not sure what exactly this dye is, but I'm pretty sure it's chlorophyll. Anyway, I started boiling both of the fractions. Because the funnel evaporates pretty quickly, it's really easy to get rid of the solvent. After the first fraction evaporated, all we got was a sticky oily precipitate, which could be CBD mixed with some oils, however there really wasn't much of anything here. Once the second much greener fraction became more concentrated, it seemed like there was just a bunch of green dark stuff, which made me kind of depressed, because this was ultimately the same result that I got around half a year ago when I was experimenting with the ZA, so I just gave up. Wait, what's that sound? Amazing! Never back down, never give up! Oh snap, so to see how to get rid of the green stuff, I've had to learn what it was. 
And one of my commenters under my old video told me that apparently the green color was chlorophyll. So I went onto chlorophyll's Wikipedia page and as it turns out it's soluble in diethyl ether. So I've got a bunch of ether in my lab so wasting some on an experiment was not that big of a deal. Once I've poured in the ether it turned greenish indicating that it indeed absorbed some of the green stuff. When pouring of the ether some kind of a crystalline substance remained it was kind of an off green color and I could feel that we were on a good track. And since the diethyl ether washing worked so well I've decided to repeat that step. What we're left with is some whitish crystals and I believe that this might be CBD. If I've had a benchtop NMR or something to scan this strange precipitate then I could test it, but because I'm poor as shit and I have no connections to someone with an NMR then it's pretty much impossible. Anyway, take this result with a grain of salt, but I truly believe that our little chromatography adventure yielded results. When it comes to the actual yield then it's probably really shit, but whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching.